this should be fun. And you'll probably, you know, one of the, one of the things you'll find is, uh, you know, that I'll be one of the few people out there in the universe who's actually de- going to defend the short squeezes, the hedge funds, the, the guys shorting the stocks and, uh, uh, and uh, analyzing it to a large extent from that perspective. Okay, so what's going on? Um, a couple of things. First, well, yeah, first there is, um, there is a stock called a, a, a GameStop. GameStop is a company, a brick and mortar company. It has stores where they sell games. You know, if you, you might have been in one, you might see them in strip malls. I think they're all over the country. Uh, like most brick and mortar companies, they're not doing well. Their stock was uh, was pretty cheap. They, um, uh, you know, COVID has not been a help. They've been really struggling. So that's item number one. Item number two. Over the last few years, uh, we have seen the development of uh, retail stock buying platforms, Robinhood comes to mind, that make it super cheap to buy and sell stocks, to trade in the marketplace, super cheap. And uh, really easy, uh, you know, interfaces, user interfaces that are simple to use, easy to use. And these have become the favorites of, uh, you know, 20, 25-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds to trade. Add to that the fact that uh, a lot of people have been uh, at home and, and uh, out of work and uh, maybe have some stimulus cash in their bank account and uh, not very busy. And day trading seems like a cool thing to do, you know, buying, selling stocks. So that's item number two. Item number three, Reddit, which is a very popular, what is it, a chat social media type platform where people chat and discuss different issues. Well, Reddit has a number of, uh, platf- a number of groups that engage in, um, in uh, discussions about uh, trading. And uh, often, you know, there's a discussion and people get excited and they all go into stock together and, um, and the stock price goes up because they're all trading into the stock all at once. And then maybe they get out. And, and over time, I think that many people uh, on the Reddit platform have come to the conclusion that they're, you know, kind of geniuses. And they're, they're really smart at this and they're really good at this, as day traders tend to convince themselves. And they have a communication platform with thousands, maybe tens of thousands of other people who are um, uh, other people who are... Uh, you know, like them, day traders and on Reddit and are ready to pounce and ready to move quickly and can move large amounts of money, for pretty, or small amounts of money, but large numbers of people pretty quickly and therefore impact stock prices really, really quickly. So you add those components, the ability to trade quickly, cheaply, the uh, chat groups where people follow each other, that people get people, each other excited very, very quickly. So madness of crowds kind of impacts where everything is wild up and people move in groups, in you know mobs into the stock market driving prices up. And then uh, a lot of stocks that nobody's paid attention to a long time, um, like GameStop, that are pretty cheap and uh, that, are, that are pushed down. And maybe there's a corporate event. Uh, I think in GameStop there was a, a replacement of CEO and the stock stacks moving up because some people think uh, a little bit more optimistic about the stock. And then that is, makes it noticed by the Reddit community and the Reddit community starts buying and the buying drives the stock price up. So then the buyers say, whoa, look how much money I made on this. Maybe we should buy some more. And they buy more and then they buy more and then they buy more and it goes up and up and up and they get more people excited hey you're missing out if you don't invest now you missed out on a great deal and then they use options options um, options is where you buy an instrument that you make money if the underlying asset the stock in this case goes up a lot you make even more than what the stock grows 
But if it goes down, if it stays the same, you lose everything. You, 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 the value of what you bought goes to zero. So uh, in, in buying options can drive stock prices up by the fact that in many cases, in some cases, the person who sold you the option buys the stock in order to protect himself, just in case the stock goes through the roof, but him buying it drives the price up. So what has happened to GameStop? GameStop, over the last, um, I mean, today, today's Wednesday, yeah, today, GameStop shares went up 157%. And what did it take for GameStop shares to go up 157%? Is for Elon Musk, before the open, open market opened today, he tweeted, Game Stonk. Stonk is used as investment banter on, on, you know, uh, uh, on Reddit. Um, and uh, he just put the name in. And it went out 157%. No other news available. Uh, in addition... Uh, you know, before today, uh, GameStop was out, how much was it? Let me see if I can get the exact number. Yeah, 3,700% over the last six months. Most of that happening over the last couple of weeks. 3,700%. The stock is worth, I don't know, the company is now worth $30 billion for a brick and mortar, brick and mortar game store complete nonsensical completely makes no sense complete ridiculous now part of what drives the stock up is let's go through uh, I don't know how many of you know what short selling is but so as game stock went up it got to a point where some investors for example um, uh, hedge funds so sophisticated investors, investors that are in the markets, that have a lot of money in the markets, that analyze markets pretty carefully. As the stock went up, uh, sh uh, these hedge funds came in and said, you know, the stock doesn't make sense that it's this expensive. We're going to short the stock. Now, what does a short mean? A short means a stock, selling a stock you don't own. So how do you sell a stock you don't own? Well, what you, what you do typically is you borrow the stock from somebody who owns it. You borrow the stock. Let's say the stock is selling at $50 a share, and you think it's going to go down. So you borrow the stock at $50, and you sell it. So you get $50 in your bank account. Now the stock goes down. Let's say it goes down to 25 So at 25 right, you now... You know, uh, you now buy the stock at 25 and you return the stock to the person you borrowed it from, right? Because you still owe the stock. How much money have you made? You made $25. You made 50% on your so-called investment, right? Remember, you borrow the stock, you sell it, then you buy the stock when it goes down and you return the stock to the person who you borrowed it from, and you made money if the stock goes down. What happens if the stock goes up? Well, let's say, again, you borrowed the stock, stock selling at 50. Let's say the stock goes up to 100. Let's say the stock goes up to 100. And the guy says, I want my stock back. Or, then you have to buy the stock for $100 and give it to him, and you lose 50. Let's say the stock goes to 200 or the stock goes to 300 or the stock goes to 3000 3000 now you got $50 in your pocket and you owe the guy a stock that is worth $3000 now imagine you did it with more than one stock so part of what happens that causes the frenzy on the upside is called a short squeeze. At some point, the guy who, let's say I'm the guy, I borrowed the stock, I'm sitting there, the stock keeps going up and up and up, and I think, oh my God, it's, it, my ability to lose money here is infinite. It can keep going up, and I'm just losing money the more it goes up. So what I do is I, I buy. 
I cover my short, and that's called a short squeeze. When the stock market is, is stock has gone up so high that I can't afford to wait, I have to buy the stock and return the stock to the guy I bought it from and get out of there. A short seller has unlimited downside risk. He can lose in theory, not in reality, but in theory, an infinite amount of money. How much can he make? The best he can do is double his money. So it's very asymmetrical risk. You can double your money if the stock goes to zero. But you can lose an infinite amount. An infinite amount. So the short squeeze is when those shorts get out. Now, when a stock goes up 3,700%, and it's not just one stock, uh, they, you know, the stock of BlackBerry, you remember BlackBerry, the phone, the, the, the email thing? It's an it's a, it's a awful company. I mean, it used to be great, but it can't compete. It can't compete with Apple, can't compete with Samsung. It's been skyrocketing. So a bunch of these stocks are skyrocketing. There are companies out there, the hedge funds out there, that specialize in shorting these stocks. Right? In shorting these stocks. Now, is shorting a good thing or a bad thing? Well, shorting is... If, so, okay, we'll get to shorting bad thing, good thing in a minute, right? Uh, because that's a whole other discussion about stock prices. So, as the price is going up, the shorts are getting squeezed. They have to get out. They lost a huge amount of money. And at least in one case... Melvin Capital. Melvin Capital was almost wiped out. Almost wiped out. A lot of these hedge funds use leverage. Um, and uh, it, it's, it can, it, it's very, very, very dicey for them. So in the case of Melvin, which was almost wiped out. But you see, the underlying trade is a good trade. Melvin is right to short these stocks. In the long run... Melvin will make money. And the people running Melvin are smart guys who in the long run make the market more efficient. I'll get to that in a minute. And what they do is absolutely true and right and correct. And yet... They're being driven out of business. Now, you know that these guys are basically good guys, and they know how to make money, and their business is good, and their decisions are good. How do you know this? Well, you know it by the fact. You know that by the fact that Melvin Capital is being bailed out, not by the government, God forbid. And if the government were bailing them out, I'd say, who knows if Melvin is good or not from a business perspective. No, Melvin has just been bailed out. Bailed out, bailout is the wrong term. They've just got a $2.5 billion investment. I think Jonathan is here. Jonathan also runs a hedge fund. Wouldn't you like a $2.5 billion investment from Citadel and uh, Point72, two of the best hedge funds in hedge fund history, Citadel and Point72, who manage, I think, hundreds of billions of dollars and who just gave $2.5 billion to Melvin. Why? To make money. <laughs> they didn't give it out of charity. They didn't give it as a bailout. They gave it as an investment. They figured Melvin was down. If somebody says it's 2.75. Maybe I wrote it down wrong. Uh, Melvin is down. We can make an investment on pretty good terms. And believe me, uh, they got good terms on this. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. We're going to make a fortune when Melvin comes back. And uh, that's how you know Melvin, no idiots. The short sellers of uh, GameStop are no idiots at all. So, okay, so we've got stock going through the roof. We've got hedge funds who short the stock getting squeezed. Now, I'm going to tell you a personal story because this happened to me. This happened to me. Uh, I mean, I think I, the guys at Reddit think they invented this, that this is the first time it's happened. There's nothing wrong with overshorting. Um, I mean, they didn't overshort. They, they, you know, they, they shorted stock they didn't have. 
But in normal times, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's not pump and dump. The pump and dump is, is what the Reddit guys are doing. So here's my story, right? Uh, this happened a long time ago, uh, 1999. happened in April 1999. In April 1999, this is in the midst of the dot-com bubble. And I know some of you weren't born uh, back in 99, so, so this is ancient history for you. But there was a, uh, a dot-com bubble, an internet bubble. And in a, there was a week in, um, in um, April of 1999 where any bank, I invest in banks, boring brick-and-mortar banks, like, like GameStop, right? Boring stuff. And there was a week in, um, in April of 1999 where every bank that announced that maybe one day it would have a website, maybe one day it would do internet banking, the stock doubled or tripled for a day, maybe two, and then went back to normal, right? So everybody rushed in, stock went through the roof, and then went back down. Yeah, by the way, this happened during, um, <laughs> during Black Lives Matter. Uh, Black-owned businesses, uh, tra the traded in the stock market, like black-owned banks, uh, went way up and then came back down to the fundamentals to what... But they went way up because everybody was excited about black investing in black-owned businesses, drove the stock up, divorced from fundamentals, they came back down to their normal level. Anyway, these banks all doubled and tripled within a day, two days. Not 3,700%, just 200, 300%. And I during that period, had a short on a bank called NetBank. You can, you can look it up. Now, I don't remember the exact numbers, but uh, this is approximately, I, this is part of managing somebody else's money, and uh, I had a short on NetBank. Why did I have a short on NetBank? Because it was already, at the time I put the short on, the most expensive bank in the United States. And that made no sense. It, it, it couldn't make a lot of money. It didn't make a lot of money. It had a, a pretty simple and uh, with a business model with no upside, no real upside. So uh, I think I shorted it at $40 a share, let's say. In a matter of two days, the stock went from $40 a share to $160 a share. Now, I, just to give you a sense of how much money you can lose in a short, um, I had a $200,000 investment in it, so maybe I shorted it less than forty. And at the peak, when it gone up, I was down a million dollars. So in a sense, a $200,000 investment, I would have lost the $200,000 plus another $800,000. So I was down a million dollars on this stock. Uh, my investor called me up and said, what are you doing? Um, I said, don't worry. The stock's going to go down. There's no question it'll go down. It's not worth 40, never mind 160. It's just not worth it. And he said, look, uh, it's not how you do this. Get out. So the next day, luckily, it went down a little bit. I got out. Uh, we still booked a huge loss, hundreds of, you know, uh, close to a million bucks. Within two years, two years, the stock went to four. Within four years, the stock went to zero. It basically went bankrupt. So, even though I was right, it was, I, I was in the same position as Melvin, I couldn't bear the losses. And I had to get out, and I booked a massive loss. That's what's going on with GameStop. Now, what will GameStop be worth in a year, two, three, four? Very little. Very little. The stock can't stay that high. You can buy and buy and buy, but at some point, at some point, it's obvious that the stock price is completely divorced from the fundamentals. KL says, Yvonne Book, I told you so, as if I would say I told you so. No, yes, but that's not the point. The point is, as an investor, 
you can't do that. You can't. There's only so many losses you can absorb. There's a certain level of losses you can't absorb as a fiduciary managing other people's money. You can't keep absorbing the losses. And in the dot-com era days, stock prices could go up and up and up and up just like right now. You don't know where it ends. You don't know how much. You don't know when your investor is going to want his money back. You just can't do it. And when you withdraw your money, when you withdraw the short, you're buying stock, which helps the bubble, and the bubble can keep going. At some point, all bubbles burst. At some point, the price comes down. Now, some people are going to make a lot of money on the way up here. The smart ones are going to get out in time. A lot of people are not going to be smart. A lot of people are going to be the p people who say, oh, I missed out. Let me get in now. And at some point, the stock will tumble. Stocks, prices are not random. Stock prices are based on the potential of a company to produce cash flows. A stock price is the present value of future cash flows. In other words, of, of future profits in a sense, but it's not accounting profits, it's economic profits. So the present value, the value today of all the stream of cash that this company is going to generate in the next 20 years. And indeed, in an interest rate environment where interest rates are very close to zero, cash that a company generates in 20 years is very valuable today. If you believe there's going to be no inflation, if you believe interest rates are not going up, so stocks should be higher given low interest rates. But they can't be this higher. Not for a company that can't produce the cash flows. Where is GameStop going to produce cash flows 3,700% greater than what, it was, what they were supposedly producing just two months ago, three months ago, four months ago? It doesn't matter if interest rates are zero. It's still true that a company is, the company's value is the present value of future cash flows. The future cash flows might be priced at zero, but even at zero interest rate. There's risk. You have to have some discount rate. If there's no risk, why is there no risk? The company could go bankrupt. The company could have less cash flows than you expect. I mean, I have heard this story of the laws of finance are gone. Growth companies are all that matters. Stocks can only go up if they grow. I've heard that story before. And whenever I've heard it, whenever people start telling me that story, that's when I know it's time to sell. God, that's when I know it's time to sell. Because that is BS. Companies have to produce cash flow. Cash flow has to be di discounted. Now, it's true. Amazon, Apple, Google. You think there's no risk in Amazon, Apple, Google's stock price? Uh, not stock price, cash, future cash flows? You think they should be discounted at zero? As if... There is certainty. That is ridiculous. Now, interest rates are low. So your inflation premium is very low. But at some point, at some point, any one of those companies could fail. Not fail in the sense of go bankrupt. Fail in the sense of produce earnings that are disappointing. So I don't know exactly what the stock price of Amazon is of Google and Apple should be. I suspect lower than what it is today, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't run the numbers. I can guarantee that the stock price of GameStop and BlackBerry are not where they should be. Of course, tech is exponential. But from, of, of what levels? Is it always exponential? Is there no st ending it? I mean, if tech is exponential and you run the numbers, Google, Apple, and Google, Apple, and what was the third? Amazon will basically own the entire world, if that were true. None of that is true. Yeah, you can, you can imagine, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, invest, stock prices can only go up. And you will suffer the consequences. And you will suffer the consequences. I mean, I heard exactly 
the same thing in 1999. Now, it is true that if you, and by the way, in March of 2000, uh, technology stocks went down. And over the next few months, the NASDAQ went down over 50%, over 50%. It took almost, a, I think it took a decade or more than a decade to get back to get back to where they were. Are tech stocks right now in that position where they could drop 50%? Certainly Tesla is. Certainly many other get stocks. By the way, many of those tech stocks in 1999 went to zero. Some of them went down 80%. Right? So... Stocks have to reflect the fundamentals. Stocks have to reflect the underlying company's long-term profitability. Stocks have to represent the riskiness associated with that long-term profitability. I don't know what is better than tech stocks. It depends on, it depends on what? It depends on the, on, uh, on the valuation. Yeah, the hyper growth profits, but if it's all priced, if that's already in the price, then it could still go down a lot. You could easily overprice tech stocks. Easily. You don't know what the return on investment is going to be in the future on a stock, even if you know what the return on investment is going to be in the future in the company. So every time markets have detached fundamentals from stock prices, we call that bubbles, they end badly, people lose a lot of money. A lot of money. And um, I suspect somebody, some people are making money right now, somebody's going to lose a lot of money on GameStop, BlackBerry, and these other stocks that the Reddit people are driving up. Fundamentals are not dead. Fundamentals will come back. Fundamentals might be dead for a month. They might be dead for a year. They might be dead for two years, three years. But they will come back, and they will come back with a vengeance. And when they do, some of you will be holding the bag. Will be holding the bag. And I, again, I'm not giving stock advice. I'm not telling you what stocks. I don't know if Amazon, Google, and Apple are overpriced or not. When I say fundamentals, do you mean reality? In a sense, yes, but a, but a particular aspect of reality. The reality of the reality of the profitability of the company, the reality of the ability to make money. I, I love the reality of the ability to make money. That's a reflection of the stock price. And when people start making arguments that Apple goes up because you love your iPhone, it's time to sell Apple. I'm not saying it'll go down tomorrow, but this is exactly the kind of thinking detached from reality. Thinking detached from economic fundamentals, thinking detached from financial fundamentals. That it's when people say that, like, you know, Tesla is really, really expensive, and, and John Galt of all people tells me, Have you ever been in a Tesla? By the way, the two are unrelated, completely unrelated. You can produce the best product in the world, and the, your stock price could be higher than what it should be. Everybody could love your product, and your stock price could be higher than what it should be. And I heard exactly the same thing about Pets.com in 1999. Where's Pets.com right now? It's zero, and it went to zero very quickly, and a bunch of other things. They were before the time. Now, I'm a huge fan of technology. I'm a huge fan of technology stocks. And long term, I think technology is going to be great. And when these stocks go down in the next, call it correction, I'll probably be buying. Would I buy tech stocks right now? I don't think so. Now, I'll be doing some research to, to, to try to put a number on these, but Right now, no.
I would not buy tech stocks. Certainly not Tesla. Um, and uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure there there are tech stocks that might be undervalued, that it might be good deals. I don't buy ARK investing or any kind of investing. You know, investing principles are like economic principles. They don't change with the mood. Uh, it is true that technology uh, has some exponential growth and technology grows at a faster and more dramatic, good technology, technology that wins in the end, which is very hard to determine who's going to be the winner, that technology does have unique growth opportunities. But that and stock prices have to be correlated. And, and, uh, and right now, they're not correlated. I will look at ARK Invest because I'm interested in, um, in people who invest in innovation. And, uh, whoops, I don't know why that's doing that. It's called, uh, he recommends a company called ARK Invest. I'll look, at, I'll look at it, but as I said, um, it'll be interesting to see what their research looks like. It'll be interesting to see what's, uh, you know, I'm all for exponential growth. That's great. Um, all right, let me, uh, so let me just, I just want to say something about why this is troubling, scary, other than, you know, it's scary because I've been in the middle of it and lost money. I mean, i give you the example, NetBank. NetBank was the future, and it was the future. I mean, the future of banking is the internet. But was NetBank the one that's going to take advantage of it? No. And I could see it in 99. And everybody, I'm sure all the ARK investors of that time, were rushing into it. And ultimately drove it up to, I don't know, 200 bucks a share. And four years later, it went bankrupt. That's what I'm talking about. Stock price and the underlying technology grew exponentially. The underlying technology of internet banking dominates the world today. But it wasn't NetBank that benefited from that. And it certainly wasn't the shareholders of NetBank that benefited from it. Um, why is the phenomena of uh, Reddit rushing into stocks and driving them up so negative. Well, one is having stock prices that actually reflect reality, that reflect fundamentals, that reflect the true nature, the true nature, the objective nature of the company, the objective uh, price, value of the company is crucial for the functioning of markets. Markets are used, prices are used to allocate capital. Prices are signals that as to where to allocate capital. A stock going up in normal circumstances is a signal that that is a growing, thriving, interesting opportunity to invest. And allocators of capital, whether it's banks, whether it's investors, whether it's uh, all kinds of investors, start looking at that area. So I'll give you an example. In the beginning of the automobile industry, automobile stocks went way up. And all the people who invested in buggies, remember buggies, Hosen buggies, looked around and said, whoa, what's going on here? Oh, it's a competitor to buggies. And they started selling buggies and putting money into automobiles. And that was good. It's a good signal. And it's good to destroy, if you will, the capital that's in buggies or reallocate the capital in buggies to something productive because buggies are a dying industry. So stock prices going up and down based on fundamentals, based on what's actually going on in the world, is crucial to the functioning of markets, crucial to the, fun to the allocation of capital, and therefore crucial to capitalism or to even semi-capitalist markets. If capital starts being allocated based on prices that are not connected to reality, it is an economic disaster. So let's say... Now, in this case, I think markets know, but let's say markets think, oh my God, G GameStop, whoa, that probably means that brick and mortar stores have increased in value dramatically, and that's the future. And everybody rushes in to invest in brick and mortar st stores, 
as they collapse. That would be a disaster for markets. And to the extent that stock prices are just giving confusing messages that people now don't know, is this a Reddit stock, is this a meme stock, or is this something else, creates confusion in capital allocation and creates less efficient markets, less wealth creation, real wealth creation, and long-term economic harm. So this Reddit stuff is not harmless. It is harmful. And to the extent that it extends to other stocks, other industries, other players, it can really cause havoc. And people are celebrating this. So, so here's, a, here's a, a one guy on Twitter writes, and he's got 4.8 thousand likes, right? He writes, they took our stimulus, we took their hedge funds. So this is, and he's got a, 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 in the background, he's got a building burning, uh, you know, like a, a riot where a building is burning. So we're burning down their house. But whose house are they burning down? They're burning down the house of hedge funds. Hedge funds who short stocks. But hedge funds that short stocks are essential, crucial, to helping make prices efficient to helping make prices reflective of real, true value so that the allocation of capital in the economy can happen effectively. If you are going to destroy hedge funds, you're destroying markets, you're destroying the allocation of capital, and you're destroying the economy in which you, li you live. So it's not neutral. It's not a game. Indeed, it's not a casino. If it was a casino, who cares? A casino, the house loses, you win. It doesn't really matter. Here it is immensely important. Prices are, in, uh, a, are uh, uh, a crucial indication. A crucial indication of where to invest capital. They determine which industries grow and which industries shrink, which companies grow and which companies shrink, which managers have, 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 you know, are successful and which managers are not. And it's long-term. It's not short-term. And these nihilists who are not only playing at roulette and, and watching hedge funds burn, they're enjoying this. They think it's a game. They think this is wonderful. But it's the hedge funds that are shorting these stocks that are the heroes. They're the ones holding on to reality. They're the ones who have grasped reality, holding on to reality, and trying to live by reality. Whereas in a sense, these people are just rejecting reality, denying reality, placing their wishes, their whims above reality. This is... Somebody writes here, um, nihilism arriving in the stock market. Absolutely. Now, again, this happens. It, it, it's not o only driven by nihilism. It, it's just driven by madness of crowds. It happened with the tulip bubble. It's happened with other, uh, the, the, it's happened with other bubbles. It happened at the dot-com. It happened with bank stocks during the dot-com, the story I told you before. Sure, 140%. They didn't, it wasn't 140%, you know, that's their problem. There's nothing wrong with naked shorts. You just have to buy more stock in order to cover them. And if the price of the stock is so ridiculously high, why not short as much as you can? That's completely connected to reality because it's completely connected to the actual value underlying this. Now, if you're interested in my arguments for the stock market, I've got a book that I wrote called Mall Defense of Capitalism, which you can buy on Amazon, you can get it on Kindle, Mall Defense of Capitalism, which actually goes through why financial markets are moral, why they're good, why they're right, why they work, why sh and why short selling is a good thing. Short selling was 260% afloat after the stock price has already gone up quite a bit, not 
after the latest bump up, but after a significant increase, a significant increase that had driven the company up way above anything that was reasonable in terms of what the fundamentals indicated. And again, I don't have a problem with shorting more than the float. Right? The people who crash the plane are the people who are playing this as if it's a roulette wheel. It's not the model of defense of capitalism. It's the model of defense of finance. And it came out uh, three years ago, and it's co-authored with Don Watkins. So it's Don Watkins and myself, The Model Case for Finance. And you can find it on Amazon. Just put my name on Amazon, and you will find it. There is a hatred of hedge funds. Why? Because people don't understand what they do. They don't understand the importance of a stock market. They don't understand the importance of stock prices. They don't understand the objective value of marketplaces. And they resent wealth. They've always resented wealth derived from finance, always going back to Jesus kicking out, kicking out the, the money changes from the temple. Uh, money derived from money has always been resented, resented. And again, I go into great depths in analyzing the hatred of financiers in the mall case of finance. Let me just look. Uh, I thought maybe I had a copy back here of the book, but I can't, I can't see it. Uh, yes, and I connected to anti-Semitism in the book, but the mall case of finance on Amazon, uh, in defense of finance on Amazon, I, I've given a course on it. I, you know, you'll find it. Um, you'll find it. Uh, you'll find it in the bookstore. Uh, all right, that's my commentary on Reddit. Uh, it, you know, if you own these stocks, sell. Here's my investment advice. If you own BlackBerry or GameStop, sell. You might miss out on, on the next layer up, but you will also miss out on the big, big move down, which is coming, and it'll happen quick, and it'll happen fast, and it'll whipsaw these people. They won't know what hit them. They won't know what hit them when it happens. And it's going to happen. I mean, remember, these are not technology companies. These are, these are bigger motor companies. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. 
like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.